This episode is sponsored by Honey Badger. Honey Badger has your back when it counts. They're the only air tracker that combines air monitoring, uptime monitoring, and cron monitoring into a single and simple to use platform. Their mission is to tame production and make you a better, more productive developer. In this episode, we're going to look at creating command line interfaces, or CLIs. And these can be pretty simple, where we have something like an age, and then we give it a birth date, and it'll return the age. If we run this again, and put it for a date in the future, you can see that it works properly. However, if you don't give it any arguments, or if you try to do something like dash dash help, which is a common parameter that you would pass into a CLI app, then you just get an invalid date. So I have another example here where we can pass in and get some help so we can see how to use this CLI. So we pass in a dash D and then we can enter in our date and we get the proper response. And so this isn't limited to just an input then output. We could also interact with command line interfaces so here we get a prompt with a default. We get another prompt with another default. We can then do some kind of selection. And then we could even mask inputs. And based on the inputs that we are giving in, and with the stuff that we are inputting, we can then do stuff with it, like titleizing the input. And then we can get into even more complex examples. And so for this instance, I have a Kubernetes instance running. And so I can run the kube cuddle get pods and it'll show me the pods that are running. I could also run some additional commands to get information about the pods, SSH into them. And remembering all those commands, it's not only going to be a difficult thing to do sometimes, especially if you don't know the exact name of the pod that you need to interact with. And there are a lot of tools available to help you with that as well. But I've created a Kubernetes CLI in Ruby and this will give us a menu. We could have a few different choices. We could SSH, we could just watch, or we could get the logs. So if we SSH, we could select what namespace we want to SSH into. I'll choose the default. And there are the three different pods that we have deployed. So when I select one of these, I can interact with the shell and I could just type exit and it takes me back into my menu. If I go down to watch, I could watch certain pods, the Docker images, volumes, or anything that I want. And this will refresh every one second, show me all of the Docker images. And so while you could create this kind of interaction in Bash, I found that the code is much more complex and it's not as easy to read. And so making this in Ruby will also give us some additional benefits. For example, if I want to SSH into a certain pod and let's go ahead and pick the cube system. And if I need to find something like storage, I could just go down this whole list and find it, or I could just start typing it in and it'll filter out all of the non-matching records and it'll just show me the one that I want. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. So be sure to check that out and use the promo code Ruby for free shipping within the United States. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the Pro Membership.